All right. Live again. You're on a Saturday before I got to go cut some grass outside and do some stuff. So we're going to draw some comics real quick. I'm going to ink this page, finish up inking this page I was working on. I didn't comb my hair. I need a COVID cut. I need a cut real bad. And, you know, it's Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday. So I just didn't feel like making my hair up for video calls. But here I am doing a live stream. But I want to I want to jump right into um, doing some comics first. Is uh, I wanted to mention, um, get a lot of questions about the brushes I'm using. So... Uh, here's my ultimate, um, wait, wait, there, 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 there are my ultimate comic brushes. They are um, basically sets of brushes that I've made over time just to kind of, because there's thousands and thousands of brushes out there. Um, these save you time. Just grab my brushes. You don't need any more than what's here. There's the ultimate comic pencil brush. Uh, well, don't look at that. That's my secret uh Secret alphabet code. Um, and then also, if you want to read the comics that I'm drawing, they'll be going up only on my Patreon for now until they're available in print or whatever later on. But for now, I'm going to put up pages as I go, only available on the Patreon. So that's the plug. Let's get to drawing some damn comics here. Let's do this. I'm going to switch this camera around. Quick, quick, quick switch here. Okay. That's enough of uh, intro plugs. <clears throat> so where was I on Wednesday night? I wasn't even able to come back and get any comics done this week. So that's frustrating. But we're going to finish inking this, uh, inking this page today, and I'll just talk out loud. Some of the tips and stuff that I'm, uh, that I'm doing and what I'm thinking while I'm drawing, that's kind of what um, I'm doing. I'm just thinking out loud as a comic artist would um, and uh, diving right in here because time is limited. <clears throat> and I uh, will switch my screen here too. So you can, but yeah, we were the, the, the last stream, we kind of redid this phase and we, by meaning me, uh, but I'm including you as a watcher. So we did this together. You killed this guy right here. Um, he might not be dead. He might just be passed out. You know, it could happen. All right, let's switch this view. Great. Okay. We're just going to get right into inks. Grab my little ink brush here. And again, just kind of work on... Now, since I haven't... Um, drawn anything since Wednesday night, sadly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work on some of this um, organic uh, matter on the ground. That kind of loosens me up and it saves me time. So <clears throat> instead of doing some, um, you know, for me, instead of sitting around and noodling around with warm-up sketches and things, now those are fun to do and you should do that, but I I have very limited time with my day job and energy to, um, you know, really do a lot of warm up sketching. So for me, if I have organic um, things in the pages, I will start on those first just to kind of noodle and kind of loosen up my hand and my arm and get the kind of flow going. Um, probably only take about another hour and a half to ink this page. And um, so that's kind of what I what I like to do to warm up. It's just little, you know, you can you can kind of have some fun with the ground and organic shapes. And most of this will be colored in anyway. So these these lines and stuff are just basically here for um, to note the perspective or note the foreground and background. So you can kind of use these as a nice little warm up, warming up your thin to thick, you know, and if you mess up, you can just undo it. Sometimes I even like to just kind of, you know, play around with 
the lighting of a shadow falling on a rock. Just because this is a really rocky, kind of earthy terrain <clears throat> out in the Badlands. Wednesday night, I said I might stream again at, you know, 7 a.m. or something, but I was just really tired yesterday. I used my brain at work all day, and I just needed to sleep. And then my dog got me up at 6 anyway, so. Um, and then I'm taking a Harvard uh, Business School course on disruptive innovation, and I hadn't had time to do that either, and that's due soon, so. I needed to do that this morning. I needed to do some chores and do a little of that coursework. Fascinating, fascinating stuff about business. Um, I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about that. Disruptive strategy stuff. It's fun. Um, because how it pertains to comics is that <clears throat> a lot of times um, I'll get asked questions about, I mean, I always, I'm always getting asked questions about breaking into comics or should I self publish or how do I make money, you know, making comics and stuff like that. And I'm going to just straight up say that you should learn a little bit about business as well before, I mean, not before you don't have to do it before, but if you haven't learned about running a business and business strategy, you should probably just take some courses on that. Um, because the business of comics is strange. And um, honestly, if you talk to other people that, are professional business MBA people, and you tell them about how the comic industry works, oh uh, boy, they don't, they just think it's kind of a joke, to be honest. It's kind of just a little hobby game sport that we're doing here in comic book land. Um, but learning about actual business philosophy and <clears throat> disruptive structure, and you know, even things like your taxes, People don't want to deal with that. They just want to draw some comics and get paid. But you need to be aware of how business works, especially if you now if you're just if you're self-publishing, you're definitely going to want to do that. You're going to want to learn business strategy and um, outside of comic books because how it's yeah you know, learn real business strategy <laughs> to apply. Yeah. Oh. So what just happened there was one of these lines wasn't closed. Okay. <clears throat> Should fill now. Okay, cool. Um, because a lot of people go and dive into, I'm going to be a self-publisher and I'm going to, I know I can make comics and then they, you know, make some bad, poor business decisions and don't think about plateaus and, uh, you know, taxes and well that's why probably 90 percent of maybe even more than that you know 90 percent of something of creators that launch things fail um that's just you know that's just the reality of it 80 percent of new products launched into any market fail so well, no one can really say why but if you actually deploy some business thinking and stuff, you have a better chance at success. So it's interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my, that's my tip. The first time people say, Oh, I want to make comic books or I want to get into self publishing or something. I'm like, you better take a business class or do something online or something. Um, there's some realities that you need to think about first. If you're just looking to just make comics, well, then just go make go go make some comics. Don't worry about the business side, but worry about that later. 
But um, it's, it's not the fun part, right? You know, business isn't the fun part of, of uh, comics. I mean, it can be, but there's a lot to think about. And it can drain you too. You don't have time to draw your comic or make your comic because you're doing taxes or pay, you know, payroll or, uh, you know. It's, it's a lot. Hats off to all the successful independent, smaller comic publishers because, man, I've seen behind that curtain and it's a hell of a lot of work to make it, to make it go. I can maybe count three or four on my top of my head, I bet, that, that are successful, <clears throat> that have been around a while. So out of the hundreds that like kind of launch. Yeah. But if you're a guy just wanting to draw some comics, making some stories and stuff, just go for it. Don't worry about all that. Actually, you know what? I need to I haven't looked at this guy's figure, so I need to uh Open up my reference here. Library. I know, I thought, let's see here. Could have sworn this guy had. Oh, where are you? Where are you? No. Just want to be consistent with like pouches and whatnot. And you know what? I, I'm messing this up here. So we're going to go back to the main page where this guy first appeared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go ahead and just take a screenshot of this. Into my, putting this into the camera roll of the iPad <clears throat> so that I can reference it for quick things like that. Because I haven't looked at this since Wednesday night. I don't want to just be jamming on the inks and, and mess up. So now there it is. Okay. That's a little bit, a little bit better view of his belt. Even though I shouldn't be zoomed, so zoomed in. Um, hey, it's Van Davis. Look at that. You never know when you're going to catch me, man. I might just pop in, pop out. Usually Wednesday nights. And usually, uh, um, Saturday mornings. That's when I'm, that's kind of my schedule for right now. So. But yeah, just put that into my, I don't need to noodle this much again. I'm going to say it over and over again in these streams. Like I'm always constantly reminding myself for the digital artists, um, you know, you have that ability to zoom way the freak in, but um, you don't need to do that because this panel is realistically about that size on a, comic page so i can get away with um you know some shadows and shapes and things to kind of not get in there and get super detail that no one will ever see so it's not, not that important and you want to save some time it's kind of the idea <clears throat> i think that strike goes on yeah Strip goes all the way down. Right on. That looks pretty good, I guess. I had someone in the last stream asking a lot of questions, and uh, I'd say come back to the streams later, or come back to the YouTube channel at least, and... Um, check the timestamps because I'm going to go back through and kind of uh, do the tips and things, even just small things like, you know, how I tackle a, a certain panel or coloring and I'm doing the whole process here. So right now this is the ink part. Um, how short.
Okay, cool. Cool, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of talk about that um, that setup situation in one of the other streams where I you got to avoid um, spending too much time on worrying about the setup and stuff because I did. And then I was just, before I knew it, I was like video editing and shit. And I just didn't, ah, you know, my wife was like, when are you actually going to draw comics any, at any time in the future? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure this video editing program out. And that's good to learn. But when you're actually trying to make a comic, then you get sucked into the process of becoming a YouTuber or something. And that's not good. So my, my system is real simple to be honest. Um, I don't know what, <clears throat> I don't know what, um, kind of computer you're on or anything like that, but my main computer here is a MacBook pro a couple years old and I'm using QuickTime to feed in, um, this iPad screen. So I've got it direct connected. There's a way to do that. I can make a little video on that maybe sometime to help. So I'm feeding that in this way. And then I use the app called, or the service called StreamYard. Shout out to StreamYard.com. And, uh, you know, that's a paid service, but it's, it's worth it. It simplifies everything for me so that I can just put the stream on live on Facebook and on um, um, a bunch of channels. I could do Twitter probably too, but I just use Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And then the real time saver for me is that it stores the high definition, you know, uh, uh, giant gigabyte files right up on the server. Um, and, uh, I can download them if I wish, or they just stay there. And then they, they, they definitely, the files, the video files feed directly into the YouTube and they stay there. So I'm not going back and editing out. If I say anything crazy live, you know, it's just going to stay. I don't think I'm going to say anything nuts. You never know. Um, and then I go back and I timestamp. I listen to myself and real quick, just kind of go through and review if I did any kind of tips like I'm doing now kind of just kind of showing you my or talking about my setup. So I might timestamp that part here. And then that's that, you know, I'm not even really looking uh, to, to, to build the channel or anything like that. I'm just throwing this on live. I might make a thumbnail for the video or something. If I schedule it in advance, it forces me to draw. So when I usually say like, hey, eight o'clock on a Wednesday night, and if I have it up there and it's scheduled, I feel the pressure to be like, okay, not only the pressure, but it, I look forward to it after my day job. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to stream tonight. Even though I'm tired or whatever, I'm still going to get down and get down to business. So. Oh, da, 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 da. oh thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, but I've been getting a lot of those questions, just like anything, you know, I, I'm free to, I'm free to ask me any questions you want or send me a message or something. I'll show you my setup. It only takes a minute. Um, I'm investing a little bit, you know, it, it is a paid service, but I don't think it's much. I don't know. I also bought TubeBuddy. Um, just because I work with a lot of YouTubers uh, during the day job and they all say like, oh, too, buddy, man, you got to do that for your, your SEO on your videos and stuff like that. Cause you know, the more people that find them, the more people it maybe helps. And uh, that's my goal. I'm not looking to be, you know, a monetized comic or a monetized YouTuber or anything like that. I'm just kind of using it for my own motivation. Okay. What's that? Got the robot head over here. And uh, it also probably needs a little bit more definition of. But this is on like more of a foreground. Right. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I was just talking this morning on LinkedIn to someone. Or posting a comment or something. They were like, name something that you're like really passionate about. I'm like, well, I like to make comics. And even though I did that for 13 years full time, you know, no other job, which was scary as shit. But <laughs> another story, but like, you don't know when your next paycheck is going to come in and you got to keep hustling all the time. <clears throat> but uh, even though that was years ago, I always tried to um, stay making comics. I only. I only stopped out of like maybe some creative depression or feeling like a failure, you know, but that's, and that's something that artists and, you know, creators never want to talk about is like the creative depression and the stress, the pressure. But I'm, I'm, I talk about it all the time because I feel like all these other artists relate exactly to what I'm saying, either if they're musicians and, um, I don't think it's healthy to stop doing something that you love to do. You know, it's probably not healthy to obsess on it and ruin your family and ruin your uh, situation or whatever, but that wasn't my case. But, um, you know, at the time I, uh, my publishing thing went downhill and I, I was able to kind of transition into more illustration and stuff, but my comic book career, you know, kind of took a nosedive like this guy. That was my comic career just pow done lights out <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh but yeah i was able to transition and i knew how to make money with my comics and stuff so yeah i started doing licensed work for like ukulele companies and uh, you know just hustling and uh well you know my first marriage there fell apart for other reasons but that was always thrown in my face, uh, comics, you know? And then I read a, I read a, or I was in a panel once uh, with some old timers in comics and somebody said, I think it was like an editor guy, I forget his name. He was like 80% of marriages of, uh, uh, oh man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll put that up in a second, man. But you know, 80% of creative marriages, people that are married to, uh, comic book artists and in divorce or just go really bad. <laughs> and that's for musicians and stuff too. Uh, because you know, me being married to a creative, you gotta, woof. you know, it's, there's a lot of stress on you to, to perform and make money doing the thing. You got in-laws that are like, are you ever going to make it? You know, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, yeah, that sucks, but I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with that. So I've got my own personal story, but my personal story lends to whenever, you know, I finally did hit something and it was going really good. And then it fell apart and I had to kind of start, you know, start again. And then my personal marriage fell apart and then that was thrown on my face. And then after everything kind of fell apart and I was trying to rebuild my life, I started to kind of just blame, you know, comics like all these years i spent working on these things you know um just never quite worked out for me so i just left it behind i said you know what no more i can't draw anymore this is stupid i'm going to focus on my other career you know which is basically marketing and management team management helping other creators and um i did that so for two years i barely drew and i had kind of you know, I had some tough managers at the time and I, I didn't want them to be like, Oh, you're working on comics. So I was kind of afraid to work on comics. And then I, uh, I, uh, developed a relationship with my wife now who wasn't my wife at the time. And she would come and hang out. We watch movies and goof around and she'd cook and, you know, I would doodle and I would sketch and stuff, but I'd mostly talk about work, you know, I'll mostly talk about t-shirts and the merch game. And, um, one night she's like, and I said, I got this other idea that I want to do, but I just, I don't know. I just can't do it. She said, well, why not? I'm like, well, it's just, it, it never works out. And the comic industry sucks. You don't understand. And she's like, well, explain the comic book industry to me. And she didn't know. She had no idea. 
And I'm like, it doesn't work. That it's not. It's so stupid. I explained diamond and all that stuff to her. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like complete outsider to the comic game. And the more she learned and saw the contracts and things, and she was just like, this is ridiculous. You're like, this is insane. I'm like, yep, yep. But before that happened, she was <laughs> she was like, you know, encouraging me to um, get back to the drawing board. And uh, I had a lot of things to kind of go through personally, but. She was right. She said one night, I remember she was, I was sitting at this little table that we had in my little apartment. And um, <clears throat> she said, uh, she like pointed down into the little office and she's like, you know, not everybody can do this. You have the power to go down there and create a whole new world or something. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, you're wasting that. You're wasting that. Why would you waste that? Why would you let those those shitty feelings aren't real and all that stuff? And I'm like, yeah, but the comic industry kind of sucks. That that's a, that is real, lady. But um, but she was right. It made me go, you know what? All right. And so I so I said to her, I was like, all right. Well, I need your help then, because if I'm going to do this thing, I just feel like I need some friend support or something. So I said, you you then, lady, who's encouraging me to get back on this saddle. You said you wanted to be a writer when you were a kid. Why didn't you do that? And so she had, excuse, excuse, whatever. And then I said, okay, well, I need you to come on this project as my co-writer then. Because it's about a pregnant girl. And I've never been pregnant before. And I think it might give a good, you know, I don't want to be a, a guy making up stuff about what it might be like to be pregnant. It might have to be a good, it might be better to have an actual female um, viewpoint on this, or at least give me some insight, you know, and make, look at my stuff and make sure the script is good or whatever. So I'm not saying something wrong. And she agreed <clears throat> because she really liked the idea. And, uh, so if you find a girl like that, that's like, you go draw comics and yeah, you should probably marry her is what I'm saying. <laughs> that's the, that's the long and short of it guys. But now I, you know, that's, that's not, completely how our relationship developed, but it made me go, yeah, you know what? I just had a run, a, a bad run. So I may have to pause this sound for a minute. If my uh, stepkids are getting home, they'll usually run in and run to their computers to stream. And I'll just say hello to them real quick. But yeah, the pressure. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's rewind because I know there's probably some young guys, maybe some old timers too, like Van here. Yeah, he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Oh yeah. So you've been in that hole for a year. You lost your job, divorced, rebuilt your life, but now you have a horrible time getting the art motivation back. Yeah, dude, that's where I was in 2013, 2014 for sure. 2013, yeah. And then now you have a new job, amazing new relationship, but little to no inspiration. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to get inspired. I love my job too. And I, phew, I could, uh, you got to turn it off at some point, you know, I really love it, but it's tough. But inspiration wise, I don't know. You got to wait for it, wait for it to come, I guess. Or give yourself something to do. I've been just, you know, uh, mindlessly kind of doing my own comic, Secret Forces, for a couple of years now. And maybe friends have seen it. Uh, most people I talk to go, nah, I didn't really read your comic. Sorry, man. I'm like, that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> it's called Secret Forces because if you, if you can find it, then you know the secret. It's an awesome freaking comic, and you should read it. But this one I'm working on now, though. This is Secret Forces, but it's different. And it's... This is going to be the one. You know? This is it. Van Davis and Rich. I see you there, Rich. You guys are witnessing history. Right here. I don't know what kind of history, but... Um, one day you'll be able to say, I was watching that guy draw that freaking panel when he did that. 
Um, yeah, so I once was going to be, there's a funny story. I, uh, I once was invited to this convention. I think it was called internet con or something like that. Like a, Oh, my one friend runs it too. Dang. I can't remember names when I'm drawing guys, but, um, it was down in Florida or I mean, no down in West, um, Dow, Maryland, Maryland intercon or something like that. And it was basically like some web comics and some whatever the I was supposed to go down and talk on creative depression and getting over that and starting again. And I, I was like billed to go talk to this small group of people. And, and then I was so, and then I was like, <laughs> I didn't go. I said I was sick, but I was really just having like anxiety and like, like fear of failure of going down and talking in front of another group of people. And that's why I just didn't go. I was like, I shouldn't be talking about this. I can't even get over this myself. <laughs> and, you know, analyzing those feelings and stuff, I realized that most people deal with that, let alone artists. Oh, Jesus God. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, if you guys are on, if you guys are on Facebook watching this, you should probably jump over to, to YouTube and do the chat in there because you got Van Davis and Rich Kempter in there. Anyway, rewind my career or whatever, my comics making. And I was young and had kids and, you know, uh, I'd always drawn comics and freelance and stuff but when I first got married with my ex-wife then you know no it was, she wasn't my ex-wife that my ex my wife at the time is that yeah that's what I'm trying to say um you know it's kind of cool at first oh this guy draws comics and people thought I was a drug dealer too for a time they're like how does he make money where does he get this money he doesn't go to a typical day job he has money all the time but he's not he must be dealing drugs. <laughs> it's like, yep, yep. That's exactly what I'm, yep. The comics are like drugs, guys, but in a different way. Um, but I had this pressure of like, Jesus, like, you know, how are you going to provide for your family? And, and, and it was fine. But it was like most of these people were railroaders or people with pensions and like, they were just told that way of doing things, you know. I once got a Christmas card or a birthday card once from my ex grandma in law lady. She was kind of super, sort of religious, but come on. My grandma was religious. This lady was like, you know, religious for the sake of feeling better about herself, maybe. And, um, She sent me a, a card once because I used to I used to have these spawn toys all over the place that I'd use as I still do. They're up there. There's some of them up there, and I would use them as like modeling, um, posing, and you know, reference. But it looked like I was a grown man that played with toys, you know, to them, and they were evil looking. So if she ever came to our house and visited, <laughs> she would like glare at my toys, my action figures. Anyways, I guess the story is that she sent me a card and it said, I wish you, and it was a little drummer, a little angel drummer. And it said, I wish you would draw for the Lord instead of like evil or something. I'm like, wow. I kept that card. It's somewhere, somewhere in an attic somewhere. So for the longest time, it was like motivation of like, I'm going to show you guys, watch what I'm going to do. And then I did it. I did it. So I, I started making enough, you know, I made enough money to, you know, provide for my family and stuff. And then, then I made a lot more money with the platinum thing. And um, for, especially for where I live. And then, you know, that's whenever all the people that were shitting on me the whole first 10 years of my marriage 
um, or whatever it was. They all suddenly were super proud of me because I was in the newspaper. And, oh, you're a sub great. When are you going to have a movie or something? And I'm like, that sucks. Could you guys have just supported me in the way of, like, encourage? You know, I don't know. Just support the creative people around you guys if you can. And I appreciate all the people that support me. Rich has been a patron for a long time, like forever and ever. Even when I said, like, guys, stop giving me money. I suck. I am failing here. I can't update these comics. I, I just, they always, the, the patrons stay to support me. So other people might say, like, uh, my wife and a couple friends have said, like, why were you so stressed out? I'm like, I got to get these comics. I got, like, and they're like, well, you don't, you, you don't have any deadlines and stuff. I'm like, yeah, but people are depending on me. I just felt like, you know, people are rooting for me or, or wanting to see my art. And I can't let them down. And I, I kind of feel like I need that motivation behind me, too. Like, I don't want to let you guys down, too. Like, and I know, because, like, I've, I've had conversations in my Patreon or whatever where I just say, you know what? This isn't working out. I'm changing scope, and I'm sorry. And then everybody's like, it's all good. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, damn, that's cool. Like, thanks, guys. So I always appreciate the support. And I try to, that's why I know, you know, I go to a convention or something and I'm talking to a young guy. I'm like, dude, I've been, I know exactly what you're doing. I know exactly what you're going through. And I'll just say it. I'll be like, I bet you, like, how are your in-laws with this? And then they know. <laughs> they immediately know. It's like this universal thing that, you know, what? Come on, you got to get a real job. Man. And I did. I got the real job now. And, uh. Now I just do this for, for pretty much myself. Like I was saying on LinkedIn this morning, um, I kind of do this for, well, I got a lot of cool, fun stories I want to tell to either myself or five people. I don't care, but I feel like if I didn't do it, I'd be kind of a little bit lost, maybe. And um, I don't want to feel that way. So... Here we are. Thank you, Rich. I think it's been like, God, I don't even want to count the years because we're both old as shit then, if I count the years. I don't know. Maybe you were 12 when I first talked to you or something. But I don't think so. I think we're old. My wife keeps me pretty um, grounded in a good way because I am so, I will always get ahead of myself as a creator does. Like you get excited about a project and you're like, I'm going to do this thing. And you tell everybody about it on your Facebook wall or whatever. And then, you know, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. And then you start to do it and then you don't get that instant result or, you know, or something falls apart. You're just like, damn. And then you don't finish it. And then you fail. And so my wife was like, I'm like, I want to do this patron level and that patron level. And she's like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's too much work. And you need to just, you know, and I'd be like, I'm going to do it anyway. And then she'd be right. <laughs> so, <laughs> So this time again, I'm just kind of trying to, I keep her in mind too, what she says, because she's smart. She's a smart lady. And, um, oh, wow. Okay. All right. I won't say your age there, old man, but you're older than me. I'm 45. We got a long way to go though. So it's a long road. Um, I don't feel old at all, actually, to be honest. So. Maybe a little fat, maybe a little out of shape, but but yeah, um, I think it was my my wife. You know, we were super busy, super busy, and uh, and I just said out loud, I just was feeling terrible. 
about the Captain Freedom uh, Kickstarter thing that we, you know, Dan Taylor, writer, and I did, and he raised enough money to 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 do it, but I don't know. He just had some problems, tough things dealing with too, and uh, it just kind of fell apart. I don't think he kind of felt like I don't know. My feeling is he's never said this, but my feeling is he thought it would generate a lot more support given the climate that we were in at the time and stuff, and uh, it didn't really get get as much support as he thought it would. But to me, I was like, I got to do this. Even if it's 100 people, I got to I gotta perform. I don't want to be a flake, you know? And I feel like a failure now, and I don't have a script to write or draw. And so, yeah, that sucked. That was a sucky thing. But finally, you know, I just said, you know what? I got some money. And uh, how much could this possibly cost to just self-fulfill this? And I started breaking it down, and I just said it out loud to my wife. And I was like, I just want to do this. I just want to finish the Captain Freedom book myself. Tell Dan... You know, hey, I'm going to print it and then pay me back. If you can, it's cool. Don't worry about it. But I just got to get this out, man. I, I don't want to start anything new until I get this going. And my wife was like, all right. And she just got her game face on. She's like, I will help you be the fulfillment officer. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh, you're what? I have a fulfillment officer now? And so, <laughs> but she was figuring it. She figured it all out. She had like spreadsheets and broke down things for Dan too. And like, Hey Dan, this is, these are the books that you promised in these levels. So can you send these? Do you have access to these? And uh, he sent some, uh, I don't know if he ever sent the books up. I don't remember. I don't, yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I don't remember because she handled all that, but um, we tried to make the packages <clears throat> as close to what people ordered you know, I did the sketch cut. I just did it all. I just said, I got to do it. You know, I got to get it done. And it wasn't anything about, you know, my friend was going through some shit. And, uh, but me personally, I was just like, I got to, I, I, I can't do this. I don't want to seem like a, I don't want to feel like a failure. You know, I said I was going to do something and, I, and we collected money to do it and I wanted to, to get it done you know so I'm, so last year was kind of like a year of like i gotta finish some things that i started before i start anything else. oh there goes my apple pencil just flying out of my hand all right okay um so yeah last year was just about finishing some things for me and I did tell my wife then too. I was like, "Don't worry," because she's like, "Well, are you gonna finish Godchild?" And I'm like, "Listen, that's a whole other uh, that's a whole other thing, right?" Here. And I've been constantly for the past I don't know. It seems I think it started in 2018. Now uh, I've been going back and forth with uh, experimenting with secret forces and the universe and just some some background world building and kind of different ideas and formats and. I like doing that. I like it. So I continue to do that. All right. I'm noodling too much in that panel. I'm just going to, that looks pretty good. That's totally enough for me to color this. I don't even think I needed to do all that, but I got away. I got away with myself talking to you guys or talking to, well, at least maybe Van and Rich or maybe listening, but I'm just going to rename the stream to DJ talks to himself while he draws. But uh, but yeah, the uh, the um, the business course I'm taking right now is very interesting to me. Disruptive strategy and. I thought, you know, I know this stuff, whatever, dude. I know all about this marketing stuff, but I don't like this was really good um, to do. Oh, look at there. Dylan's always there. He must have the bell notification on or something. Let's see. But today's revelation in my little coursework that I was doing was. 
that businesses have three, you know, or when you're innovating or whatever you got, you know, or any kind of business strategy, actually it's just business model. You know, you have resources, which are people and technology and your brand. And then you have processes, processes, <laughs> processes, right? And um, that's just how things are done. And, and then there's the profit model. So my boss will say, it, it's the three Ps. People, process, and profit or something. Um, so do you have the right people? Do you have the right processes? And then I was thinking about... Hmm, well, this, this course made me think about it, but there was a part in there that said a problem in innovation happens when, okay, if you're doing a task over and over again the same way, that becomes your process for getting the thing done that you just normally do over and over again, which resulted in a profiting model. And so they just keep doing it over and over. They might fix it a little bit along the way or tweak it, but the process stays. And when a process stays, that becomes your company culture. So I was thinking about that in all things, really. Like if you do a routine over and over again in a family or in a business or whatever, that it becomes the culture of your company to do it a certain way. And the problem arises whenever innovation comes around or a new person or a manager or something like that, or like my boss now kind of rolls in and says like, we're going to do this now. And it's like, whoa, 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 slow down there, cowboy. Um, and I remember my first boss at my current job. Um, at some point I was rocking and rolling with some stuff and she pulled me aside and she said, DJ, you got to do things this way. You got to slow down a little bit. You got to, like, but whoa, 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 like that, right? And they were fast moving folks, but um, she said, You're like a bull in a china shop. And I'm like, What? <laughs> I kind of wore that as a badge of honor, too. I'm like, I am I'm gonna wreck this, I'm gonna wreck it and put it all back together again. But no, um, but I thought about that today in that course when it said that whenever. Uh, whenever a task becomes a routine and then the routines become the company culture, you can't innovate anything. So with comics too, I think uh, we don't do things like that. We don't do web comics. We don't do it like that. We don't give our comics away for free. What are you doing? Right. What are you doing guy? Giving away your stuff. Um, and, uh, Oh, doing dishes. You want, you want to come and do my dishes, Dylan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, without being like a total disruptor, you go, man, what do you do? Your, your company wants to grow and innovate, but how do you do that with without seeming like you're the cowboy or the person that's all trying to disrupt the team or a process or compete against each other or something. That's not what the goal is. But our company in particular, is, <clears throat> we're bringing in a lot of, of uh, I guess, new blood, well, we'll say. And it's interesting. My boss came from Groupon and Accenture and he's on like the Forbes council and shit and super smart guy. And he knows I'm super smart as well, but maybe just not a little, maybe I'm just not like a little, um, reined in a little bit. Like, like, Hey, you got the concepts, right? But try this, right? Like pick your battles and things. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I like to be a straight shooter. You know, anybody that knows me, if you come to me and say, what do you think about this? I'll go, well, do you really want to know? Because I'll tell you. And then I value people that value that for me because I'm not saying it out of a personal way or anything like that, whether it's your, your comic book or your life or whatever. If you really want to know, I'll try to help you. 
you know, I might not be right, but I might give you really terrible advice too. You know, don't blame me though. You took it. It's your fault. <sighs> but it's interesting. I like it. I like to think about that stuff with comics and with life and, you know, that's why I started today off just by saying to anybody looking to become, I, I get so many people that are like, I can just publish my own comic book. I'm out. Yeah. And I think it's any industry too. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this stuff, but I'm going to say it anyway, because no one's going to watch this. But uh, my wife, she runs a small whiskey distillery right now. She's the master distiller. <laughs> Of West Overton Distilling, which is a museum, actually. The, the West Overton Village and Museum is a museum. Home of the Overholt family right here. Out there in Scottsdale there. A pretty place. A lot of weddings and things there. You know, a lot of happy people you know, doing things. Um, but they started to fire up the whiskey again there for educational purposes originally. Yeah. And um, now... You know, I got to say, like, there's a lot of people involved and stuff. I know Don't if anybody's listening, I don't want to say that my wife is like the killer, you know, point here, but she is, you know, I watched them for years before I knew my wife, even they had this still out there and they just said they were going to do whiskey for years. They said they were going to do it. They said they were going to do it and then never happened. But my wife don't like to sit around and talk about shit. She's like, okay, I can get this done. We can get this distillery built out. She's a real go-getter man, which is why I like her. And um, I love her. I don't just like her. I like her too, but, you know, pretty much love her. So not pretty much all the way. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she'll never watch. She'll never listen to these. I'm like, did you listen to the stream? And she's like, no, I'm busy. Good. Is what I'm about to say. You know, whatever. She'll laugh about it, though. Anyways, she started creating some noise with the whiskey scene. Because, not noise, but good good stuff. She's been at it and learning for a couple of years now. And she's met all the right people. They're, they're really open people in the whiskey world. This Pennsylvania rye community thing. I don't know. It's a community. And they're really open, you know. Herman, I know some of these people now, too, kind of by way of of her Herman from dad's hat whiskey. That's a good, that's a good whiskey there. But, um, Eric Wolf and his dad, who looks, his dad looks like the guy from uh, breaking bad. looks like Mr. White. Uh, I'm telling you. And, uh, it's just cool that she knows all these people, right? And this isn't the whole story. So just, you know, I'm, I'm going to get there. Something happened to her this week. That was hilarious. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> Dylan, this is digging, digging your hole. No, it's fine. This is fine. Um, this is fine. Um, so she's been in the paper a little bit and just like the, cause West Overton is starting this thing and it's rye whiskey and it's kind of in the spirit of the Overholt family. You know, they created Overholt whiskey there. Abraham Overhold. There's a whole history of this stuff, right? Um, and there's a museum there and stuff. And, um, you know, it's it's attracted some uh, big players in the whiskey world. You know, Jim Beam comes down and uh, looks around and stuff. I can't really... I'm not going to talk about that too much. But um, it's it, eyeballs are on that place because it's a historic place in whiskey. And you can't take the place away. And you can't own it because it's a nonprofit owned by the Frick Foundation or whatever. Or some, and um, so, anyways, this week I'll cut to this. This guy comes down from I don't know his name. I can't remember. Oh no, I remember his name because I'm about to tell you his name right now. His name is Maximilian. No shit. I've never met a Maximilian, right? And and actually, uh, counterpoint, just real quick, I was like, does he go by Maximilian? And she goes, yeah. Uh, someone said Max, and he's like Maximilian, 
or something like that. By the way, Maximilian, if you're listening to this, I'm not making fun of you, dude. That's a cool, that's a sweet ass name. <laughs> oh, my wife's never going to let me come to whiskey events, guys, in the future. But anyways, old Maximilian, he's running out. He's got a big ideas and he's got this distillery he's making up the mountain, like up a little ways. And I guess he came down to kind of, you know, network or, or get some information or talk about rye whiskey. And uh, he's building a museum as well or something. I don't know. I heard bits and pieces of this, but it turns out, I guess he doesn't know anybody and he doesn't really know anything really about rye whiskey. So as my wife, who's been training now for you know years, is asking him questions, she's like, this, this, and he's like, no, I don't do it this way, and I'm going to do it that way. And she's like, well, this is not going to work, dude. Like, And then he turned his nose up a little bit at, her, at the, the idea of Herman from Dad's Hat, and he just kind of seemed off, I guess. That's kind of the tone of, like, he seemed like he already knew what he was going to do. He already had his business plan. He's a smart guy. And... He's going to do it his way. And my wife was like telling me, you know, this was the concept that we were talking about was that she was kind of worried that this guy was going to go down this, this other path and waste a lot of his money. And we, and I'm like, well, why don't you call him and consult with him? No, I don't want to be. She's like, well, now I feel though, like some of the things he said to me, he's not correct. And I, I know I'm not crazy now because she asked a couple, she did a follow-up questions with some of her people that she knows. And I'm like, well, maybe you're the, you know, maybe you're the lady who needs to introduce him to the people. And she goes, Oh, I don't know. I don't know about any of that. And I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, if it were me, I'd be like, yo, uh, Maximilian, I, I know what I'm doing. Let me hire me on as a consultant and I'm going to consult. I'd be like, yo, where did you learn your information? Maximilian, where'd you get your info? You don't know this person? Oh, no. Why? Why don't you know these names I'm giving you? That's like if you were breaking into comics and I said, hey, <laughs> you know, do you know who Will Eisner is? And they go, I don't know who Will Eisner is. I'd be, oh, shit. We're in some deep shit. That happened to me, by the way. Side story. My editor, my very first editor in my entire life was a young lady uh, who's put on my Hero by Night project. And she goes, oh, yeah, I'm into comics. I, I'm really into this. I know all about it. Like, I'm going to help you with your story and stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. And she goes, well, do you have a script? And I'm like, no, I, I kind of work in the Eisner method. And she goes, what's the Eisner method? And I'm like, well, you know, Will Eisner. Who's Will Eisner? And I was like, oh, shit. Shit. That's when I knew. Uh-oh. I'm like, well, don't worry about it. I got this. <laughs> Let me just make my comic. And then they basically just checked for spelling errors. And I was like, all right, I got this. Just uh, editors, I don't need to work on your story, your story structure or whatever. Just let me do my deal and uh, get out. Well, we need to see a four-act structure and up a strip, a script for part one before we approve the... No, uh -uh. it's not how I make comics. Let me do it. So back to Maximilian. Um, he's got his thing figured out. I don't know what, but yeah, I'm thinking everything's a community. Everything, YouTube, YouTubers. And people know people, man. It's a small world. They know what's up. People are going to laugh at you behind your back, Maximilian. If you're, if they go, do you know about this? And you go, I don't know what that is. And they're going to go, shit. He doesn't know shit. He's going to waste so much money. So, Max, a million. You got to educate yourself, brother. You know. But my wife can't be your teacher. I'm sorry. She just can't. Unless you're going to pay her like $80,000 a year. Then she can totally be your you know, person. But 
And now I actually said that to my wife. I was like, well, what if this guy needed a distiller? Because she's like, who's going to, have you hired a distiller? And the guy's like, well, I'm going to be a distiller for this mega place. And he, she's like, whoa, okay. So she starts giving him some advice because she's done doing this on a micro scale. And uh, yeah, Max. Uh, I said, well, what, what if he offered you money to become a, thing and she's like I still probably wouldn't do it because I just think that he's going to probably fail I don't know if I want to put my eggs in that basket so that's you know I don't know. I'm wondering where did he get his info from like who told him the things that were wrong because then I would try to say like don't, don't listen to those people you should be going around talking to the real people that are in the scene. And then, and then even the most famous, um, you know, business development uh, gurus and shit will say, you know, you should surround yourself with or be watching the thought leaders, you know, virtually. You don't know, you don't have to know them, but you should know the thought leaders of your, what you're getting into. And so I use that as a, a litmus test sometimes for people in my own realm that I'm in. So if someone tells me they're a copywriter and I go, oh, cool. So you're really into copy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Who do you read? What? Well, if you're really into copy, you know other copywriters. So you know the deal. You know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anybody right now. In comic books, if you said, who do you, who inspires you? Like, whatever. I, I would just... Boom, 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 boom. Got a million names, right? Oh, hey, look, Rich. Watching Moonshiners on TV, Alicia was actually invited to be on Moonshiners. No shit. They sent her a, a thing bef right before COVID happened, I guess. Or in the middle of COVID, they're like, we want, we, we need people to be on Moonshiners. And uh, she do, she was like, I can't do that. Because she was like, I don't know enough to go on that show. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. You can. She's like, but I don't make Moonshine. I make whiskey. And I'm like, just get on, just get on that show. And she's like, and then her main concern was, what's the perception of people that are on that show because those dudes wear like hillbilly aprons and stuff and it's really like tell you know it's like really jarred up for tv but i guess as it turns out uh a couple of those guys on that show are actually kind of well revered i forget their names i can see them in my mind but a couple of them are actually like you know guys that know what the fuck they're talking about so I was like, that's cool. You should get on that show, Alicia. Come on. <laughs> but anyways, you gotta know, you gotta know the community to know if you're coming down looking for insight on a topic, then be open to learn. If someone's like, Well, yeah, this person, and they go, Ah, I'll listen to that person. It's like, well, let me tell you why you should listen to this person. I'm sure that Dylan, and I won't know the names, like my son Dylan, uh, he's a software developer. And I'm sure that he follows all kinds of, you know, software developers and business people that are starting their own stuff. And um, It's whiskey, Rich. She makes rye whiskey. Bourbon is um, corn and what corn malt and some corn corn wheat and rye? Oh, I'm messing it up. Corn wheat and rye. Corn is in bourbon. Um, rye whiskey is just rye and malt or something like that. Hold on, I gotta speak of the devil or speak of the wife. And she appears, not the devil. Get text her real quick. All good. I'm streaming and talking about Maximilian and talking 
about the name Maximilian right now. Huh? <laughs> Maximilian. Right now. Okay. <laughs> I got. You know, I wanted to watch my stream because it gives me some views on YouTube, so I can be a famous YouTuber. <laughs> oh, but that's something I. Yeah, even on YouTube, I don't know anyone, but I do know people because, like, I work with YouTubers all day, pretty much. And now we have brand ambassadors, and a lot of them are really well known brand ambassador or um, how to uh, YouTubers, Roberto Blake and Daniel Batal. I'd never heard of these guys. I mean, yeah, I ha actually I had heard of these guys before because I watch a lot of how to videos when I'm trying to do a skill, like learn video editing or something like that. Daniel Batal on there and stuff like that. So these, but these guys all know each other. They're like a network of people. So if some new guy came on the scene and was like, I'm going to show you how it's done, fellas. They'd be like, Poof. okay, fella. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens in comic books all the time. I think it happened most epically failed with a company called CrossGen and a dude. Oh, boy. His name is escaping me right now. CrossGen. I, I like that company because it had a lot of energy and stuff and... You know, but um, I'm almost done. I'm going to start. Let's start coloring this guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cross Gen Comics that kind of came out of nowhere in the late 90s or something. The big millionaire guy. Same story. It sounds like Maximilian guy. I don't know. But Mark, Mike, Mark, Mark, something. But anyways, big millionaire guy kind of came in the comic book industry, started hiring all these names up. I'm just going to give it to you in the DJ memory style because I'm drawn here and I can't look it up right now, guys. Cross-gen comics. But the big millionaire came into the inn and was like, um, well, hello, Braylon. What's up? Comics, that's what's up. Drawing some comics live. I'm about to color this page. Reset the room here. I'm going to color this page or start blocking it in. And, uh, or you know what? We're going to jump to the other page because I got I to gotta do some colors on this page here. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to figure that out. Um, that's what's up. I love comics. Me too. So yeah, cross gen comics. Uh, millionaire came into the um, uh, industry, rounded up a bunch of people like Mark Wade and a bunch of other big names. That Mark Wade's the only one standing out to me right now. Sorry, everybody else that's famous in comics, but he like he got this compound or this really cool office space in Florida. Had everybody move down there, and he was just like, cross gen is going to be the future of comic books. Oh. And then it just kind of, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch pages here. We're going to go into this page and do some coloring now. Great. How old are you, Braylon? I'm going to be a comic book artist when I grow up. Please be like 35 or something. That would be funny. But if you're not, then great because the world needs more comic book artists. They keep comic books alive. Don't just do digital stuff. Make sure it's in print too. Okay, so I'm gonna restudy this page here because I don't know where I was. So I got the background colors, my foreground colors. And we were doing the sky. So great. 11 years old. Raylan, I'm sure you probably draw way better than me, 
than whenever I was 11 years old. And I can prove it to you. You use Procreate. Great. I love Procreate. This is my favorite drawing program. Somewhere there's a link of my artwork whenever I was 14 years old. And my artwork was really not good. But I thought it was great at the time. <laughs> and all my friends told me it was great. But you just got to keep drawing every day. And uh, sooner or later you'll be awesome. But you probably already draw better than me. So that's the truth. Okay, so I'm going to go to my coloring. I like my watercolor brush. It does everything for me except for mow my grass, which needs done. Dylan, come up here and mow my grass, Dylan. Put that on your chore list. <laughs> okay, why is it not coloring? Aha, okay. All right, let's get in here. We can go big. Okay. Yeah, I stopped coloring this, so I'm going to jump back and forth a lot while I work on this project because this is page three, and then I was just working on page five. So this is all one condensed scene. So when I'm coloring it again, I'm able to, since I painted the sky once up there, I can now reference um, <clears throat> reference things. There's my son. You do your own chores, old man. Yeah, I know. I had to do some chores this morning before I could draw comics. Just like if I were 11 years old, I had to, to I had to do some schoolwork, a little college course I'm taking there. I had to do. Um, dishes and I uh, cleaned my room a little bit. I was a good boy. I, now I could draw comics the rest of the day if I wanted to. Although I do have to cut my grass because it's it's getting very high. So. All right, that's looking good. Braylon. So can I teach you how to draw? I would say you are on YouTube right now and I have hours of me doing this. But there's also so many better teachers on YouTube for making comics and drawing how to draw. But I would say my one tip of advice is to just draw every day a little bit a day or a lot a day if you can, but at least a little bit every day. And my son, Dylan is watching this right now. And now he's 22, or I think 23, I don't know, he's 22, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's 22 now, but I'm sure he remembers when he was 11 years old that I was still drawing things almost every day. And have fun doing it. Oh, and Braylon. Wait, he's 22, almost 23. Yeah, I know. Almost 23. You're almost old, Dylan. Uh, and Braylon, there's a, there's a website called webtoon.com. If you don't know it, it's an app for your phone. If you have a phone, I assume you do or something. You're on the, you're on YouTube right now. By the way, I never let my kids on YouTube when they were 11. It was a different time. But now my stepsons are on YouTube and whatever all the time. FGTV, you probably know that one. And uh, 
but just draw every day. And Webtoon, yeah, sorry. Webtoon, you can upload your own little comic. And there's all different types of styles on there. There's beginners and there's kids like you and there's adults like me and all ages on there. So what's your favorite comic or style, Braylon? I see that you got like a like a Pokemonish looking head there in your in your graphic. Cartoons. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny because I just I just told someone else that I would if a, I told somebody else that if any child came to me and said I want to be a comic book artist I would say run away don't do that there's no money in this but now I'm telling an 11 year old that you should draw every day and get into this and keep comics alive because That's the truth, though. You should. Comics are magic. Comics are magic. Oh, good. Superheroes. Action. Mystery. Great. Secret Forces is on Webtoon. My comic here. I don't update it now. There. But it, it's on there. Secret Forces. You can still subscribe there if you want to go through, read some. But um, I wish I would have had a, a, a webtoon whenever I was eleven. Because whenever I was eleven, there was no internet, <laughs> so it was just me and my friends making comics together in our bedrooms. Little stapled comics, no no computers. You know, just take a piece of paper, and make a story on it. All right, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna show Brayland real quick how bad my artwork was. All right, let's. I'm just gonna keep. I should keep it queued up. Let's see here, DJ Kaufman, Braylon, you're gonna you're gonna. Well, you should subscribe to the channel before I show you this artwork. Because it's going to make you just go, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. DJKaufman.com slash Scorpion. All right, let's get into it. This is what I do at comic book shows when when kids come up and say they want to, they want me to teach them to draw. Look at how bad that is. Like the, look at this leg. I don't, what, what? But this was the type of comics we would draw. Look, look at that sweet staple. Right. Yeah. And I had an epic, like my friends were reading this stuff. They're like, when's issue two coming out? I'm like, you know what? This is issue number one. The original one I showed you here. Yeah. That's Scorpion number one. But then when they wanted an issue number two, I was already, I was like, no, I'm relaunching and I'm doing Scorpion number one even better. <laughs> Rich is like, whoa. <laughs> But there's a scorpion, Rich, right? Now, you can go into Secret Forces. You can see him. There he is. Look. That's why I brought him back. I brought him back to go, you know, bringing some of these old characters back from these comics, man. These are rare. <laughs> Look at Lone Wolf. And he had three fingers, by the way. I don't know why. But Lone Wolf was like my spinoff character. And he needed to have... Uh, <laughs> Just kept the whoa. <laughs> and I was, I don't know. I gotta say I was like 14. Something like that. I don't remember. It gets worse. This is inside number one. So this is Adam Thomas when he first discovered. Let me go through the story for you guys, right? Yeah. I am a professional now, Braylon, but back then I was not a professional. Yeah. Oh boy, the, the writing's really bad. But like he shows the history of how he found his weapon. And it was from, it was an alien weapon. And like the Mayan guy used it to like 
control these people and move them through the Mojave Desert to fight against rival tribes and wipe them out. That's what all those scribbles are. Okay. And then, well, I, you know what? I don't have the story, but yeah, that's how it happened. And then the power overtook him and the guy became evil. And then the, the aliens came back and took that weapon and buried it in the Mojave Desert in Death Valley. And that's how our boy, uh, Adam Thomas here found the scorpion, uh, the, the weapon. I don't know why it was called scorpion. I was into scorpions at the time, I think, <laughs> but here's scorpion league and here's some bad Rob Liefeld looking BS. And I was coloring this with, um, Oh, colored pencils or something. I don't know. This guy here, his name was Atlas. And he was like super strong. Uh, Katana was just a, you know, a chick with blue hair and, uh, right. And a Katana. And this is, uh, and this looks, oh man, this is really bad. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this was Blades. His name was Kitaru Katsuri. And he had two swords and his name was Blades. But here he's shooting power out of his hand. But my placement of this hand looks like he's shooting power out of his. Yeah. Not a good placement, DJ. And then this guy, his name was Shadow. And he could split into a shadow form of himself. Okay. So that's, that's all you need to know about that. Oh, yeah. Here's their names. Blades, Atlas, Shadow, and Katana. And then look at this. Look at this line. These are my regulators. <laughs> oh, and there's this, you know, Adam's forlo forlorn love, Jessica, right? And so Jessica, she actually could control plant life. So that always kind of stuck with me because I had a character, a character named Elementress, and this was the Elementress. Um, not like poison ivy stuff. It was a little bit more druidy. Um, and then there was a personal show for her. Look at this smug mofo. Like he's like really smug guy. But this was like you needed that team of people to support you. So there was Rashonda here and Skip, computer electronics guy with a Hawaiian shirt. And there you go. Uh, yeah. So if you ever need to see how bad I drew. DJKaufman.com slash scorpion. But now we're getting back to drawing now. <laughs> so you got to get all those bad pages out of you. So if you're drawing something and you're like, it's looking cool to you at the time, because that looked cool to me then. And no one told me how bad it was. So, you know, my friends all thought it was great. But it's pretty bad. Great, Braylon. I hope so. I hope I get to see your drawings. You can send them to me. I don't, I can't really give you any other tips except for just draw constantly. And that's the only way that you will improve or get better or, and also don't wait around. Don't wait around thinking about it, doing it. You launch your comic today, homeboy. Just do that. Why not? You know, just do it. Just do it. I used to have kids at uh, Pittsburgh Comic Con. Let me go. It's wrong here. Why is this one? Oh, it's on this panel. Okay. Okay. I need to stop jumping around, but I wanted to do the sky. The sky. Okay. The sky's done. Sky's done. Sky's done. Sky's done. We'll go panel to panel now. So I'm going to start on this guy. And his suit is kind of red. And I will put a... I'm going to put a um, shield over, like a glass shield at the end. But for now, I'm going to color him as if we're in a cockpit with him. So that's what I'm going to do. Whoop, nope, got to switch. Switch back to my other room. Okay. Yeah. 
I need a little deeper red. Like crimson. Okay, that's fine. I haven't colored this guy's outfit yet, but it's red. Oh. Okay, good. I think if I just isolate this layer, I'm fine with him all being red, so I just fill it in. There we go. Okay. Unisolate. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do, um, I don't know where your time zone is there, but uh, I'm going to do live streams usually Wednesday nights at 8. I'm trying. And then usually Saturdays too. Can I do a video of blending colors? Sure. I was looking for some colors I could blend right now. I got to anyway, so I might as well show you. So in Procreate, I might put the layer. I already have these guys, this big color block here. What I'm doing right now is I'm blocking in shapes. So I know that this guy over here actually is in red too. But I'm not worried because they're going to be behind glass, but I still like to get the color down. I just, I like it to do that. So their shields will be a little bit different color, probably like a, you know, like a bluish, a bluish color. We won't see the skin tone through this visor, so that's fine. But that's why everything will be kind of blue in there. Let's do that. I'll try to get the flats in here first. So let's just focus on this part. And I'll stop jumping around. So I'll, I'll do some blending here in a second. Okay. But I want to get my flat colors in here first. And I think this tube is probably like a uh, gray. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then what else on his suit? Um I'm okay with changing this to gray too. Like a metal. It will be metal in a minute. That part of his helmet. Okay. All right. So then usually my coloring, I just go, I like to do a three-toned, so I'm still doing kind of like flat colors here, but I'll do, I'll just select down a darker shade first, and I'll kind of, you know, put that in here. Okay, that's the shadow shape. Um, and then I gotta wait one second here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, so you can just go ahead and pick different colors from your color wheel. This is the seat that's behind him here. Okay. Great. Just to kind of differentiate between his suit and... And then if you hold the little the little thing between the sliders here and then hold your hold your cursor down it'll turn into the color selector so if i want to quick jump back to this red i just do that and let go and now i'm back to that shade of red which i want to be a little darker so i'm just putting in the basic shadow shapes of where lighting would fall so this is all dark Sure, if I'm icing it, I'm not. 
So isolating your layer like that makes it so that you don't draw outside of the shapes that you've put in there. So you can't go outside the lines. So I'm gonna put in my shades here still. So, okay. And then I'll start up here on the head. I wanna do a light, no, a light version of this color. So probably like that and hit up the top of his helmet where the light's hitting it, right? right? And you know, you might even get super crazy and throw like a little bead of, a little bit dots, cause this is gonna get to the blending part here in a minute. So I'm just putting in these, you know, I might even put a little white, a little bit lighter, just like a boom, 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 right? Right there, right there. Now, if I switch right to the blend tool, the smudge tool here, I can do it this way. And let me see which I'm, what I'm selected on. Stucco, we'll do, you switch the, you can switch this blending tool too, to um, boil. And now it should, um, whoa, whoa, that's really big. So I wanna switch that down to like that. That's really thick, actually. So I'll change the opacity down. This brush probably wasn't the best one to do this, but you can see that I can blend in the... This is really over blending, actually, to be honest. But if I take my brush along that line, too, and blend the light color into, or the dark color into... I don't like this brush, to be honest. Mm -hmm. watercolor. This is going to be way better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. now I can keep pulling. See what's happening? When I'm zoomed in way. I can pull that. I can pull that all down in there. I can pull from the light colors into the... If I wanted to. We're going to do that. We're going to pull this this way. Keep pulling it, keep pulling it. Right. Just a nice sheen. And now I'm going to pull this dark up to meet it. The darkness to meet it. Right. That joke. So there you go. There's a nice blended blending job. And then, you know, um, the colors in the sky, if you're using the right brush in Procreate, so my watercolor brush here, or like the damp color brush, it will also, I'm just gonna, I like my damp damp color brush. I'm gonna do another layer here. Same thing. If you wanna learn how to do shading, I would say start with like a dark color, nice soft brush. It's already going to do that the more you touch and it, and it blends, right? Like that. But the real awesome thing is to to take that lighter that lighter color again, just a little bit, kind of put it up here. Right. So there's a lot of videos about shading and pencil drawing and stuff like that. It'll show you what I'm doing. So learning it on paper too is a good, you know, just with a uh, with a pencil will help you learn to to blend things around. Right. I'll change back to that guy, and then But a lot of these brushes will do this for you. So I'm gonna go over here and just right, just a sphere, whatever. But that's basic. There's a lot of basic videos on that. You'll learn those techniques as you go, for sure. 
for comic books and the type of stuff that you say you like and that I like, I like this three-toned animated coloring look, and I like my backgrounds to have more texture. Um, that's just how I prefer it. It's a personal preference, I guess. Go back to my regular brushes now. Let's use my anchor brush to lay these flats in. And need a white. Mm, I can't decide if I want. I think I want this padding to be kind of like a, a cream color. Yeah. Bye, Braylon. Goodbye. I hope you subscribed. Come back. Also, there's probably way better teachers than me. A little darker than that, actually. Whoops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shoot. That's better. Ah. Threw myself off there a little bit. All right. It's the first time I've colored these characters. I knew that their suits would be red, but it's the first time I'm really getting in here and figuring it out. Oops, no. So, even the shadow is just on the wrinkles, you know. And this is a lot of work I'm putting in for something that's probably going to be covered over in a minute. But that's okay, because I don't want to get the base. I needed to figure out their, their base color scheme. So. Now I'm thinking that that stripe goes all the way to their gloves. That kind of makes sense. So these gloves will be kind of like a light... Um, you know, tan, leathery material. So the cream color first. Yeah. I thought maybe my experiences, I was a little just, Rich says, just pass on my experiences to others. I've, I think you mean in relate in relation to like teaching. So I wasn't really sure if an eleven year old can understand uh, the the concepts I was talking about earlier about divorce and you know <laughs> the creative depression and stuff. I don't want to scare kids away. But man, I don't even know where would I be if I would have had YouTube. When I was 11 years old, man, I was 11. It was 1987 or 1988, 87. 
Hmm. Man, I didn't even have any, you know, but even when I was a teenager trying to learn things about drawing, one of my favorite things to do was like, I'm going to the bookstore and I'm going to that section where it says how to draw comics. And I saw the, you know, how to draw comics the Marvel way. And I used to get that in my school library too. It was always taken out and the kids would draw it and tear, tear pictures out. Yeah. But um, a lot of Garfield books. I was really into Garfield, man. That was my favorite comic strip when I was a kid. Love me some Garfield. I could draw Garfield blindfolded. I could draw Garfield right now. Right now. And Odie. All those characters. I loved that. I loved Garfield. But anyways, I'd go to the Walden books or whatever. Even as a even as a young adult. And I would just start collecting books on like painting and coloring and shading and all this stuff. I still have a lot of them. A lot of them I let out and they never came back or you know, but um, now you have everything at your fingertips. You could just say, I want to learn how to do the Chioscuro method. And then you're a master at it in like a week or two days or five minutes. It's crazy. Nuts. Okay. Right. So another trick, because we're going to do the double, I'm going to isolate those black lines. I'll come in here, grab this to a really dark hue, and then I'm going to paint over those lines of the that are in the mask. Whoa. Whoa. We're getting... So as I was drawing this, I was actually thinking about this, that this is the way that this mask was going to end up looking. You know, the, the, the face lines would be faded out. So now he's looking like he's in the helmet, right? That's the, the idea there. But you have to think about that as you're inking it or as you're giving it to an inker too, that this will be toned differently. Let's check in on my wife and see what she said about Maximilian real quick. Nope, she didn't say anything. All right, good. All right, I'm not in trouble. Great. Great, Maximilian. We're in good shape, fella. Um, but yeah, thinking about what's going to be toned out like that and that there's even going to be, now I know that there's going to be a layer on top of this to be glass. That's a lot of work, but, you know, it's worth it. Make a panel look cool. Oh, wait, our wrong panel. We isolate that. Get in here. There's not much to it once you learn the Concepts, it's just a lot of deep work. So it's a lot of, you know, am I getting the lighting right? The lighting's coming down, of course. And where's it hitting? And where's the shadow falling? And sometimes just like a little hint of, you know, now I can now I can just jam around and grab, you know, bits and pieces right from here as I'm going and clean up little hits. I don't have a third tone for my, so I'm always thinking in animated tones, right? Three tones, bass, light, shadow. That's for my figures usually whenever I color. Um, and then I, it just makes it look more animated to me. And that's how I like my comics to look. My favorite, there's kind of like something like, um, Darwin Cook's colorist, Jay Bone. 
all the Darwin Cook uh, comics. The New Frontier from DC. I, I just, I love that. I love those. And I would just sit and stare at the coloring and be like, oh, man, that's neat. And then, like, if he needed something textured in, he would just kind of come in and hit it. He would just hit it. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Right? Yeah. Also, no, I think the, the black's going to stay with the masters. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure, but I think so. Some other device on this pack. Now that I like, you know, I like that color. I'm going to make that, I'm going to make that. I'm going to make that color of their backpacks. Just because. Oh, I forgot that too on that side, didn't I? Maybe. Okay. All right. Making a lot of progress here. So that panel looks great. It's looking good. Um, gonna go ahead and kind of keep the same blue, but maybe darken up a little bit. This is the instrument panel inside the the instrument panel inside of his ship. Right. Am I outside the lines there? I sure am. Look at that, DJ. No, shoot. Okay. There's something going on here. No. What layer is this? Oh, this is sticking out. No one would ever notice, but. Right on. Just want to move some stuff here real quick. All right. It feels like this got duller. My screen. What's going on here? I need my brightness to pop up. You can't see the brightness change. Oh, I guess you can on that little screen, but my my photo or my. The screen I'm looking at just dimmed. Oops. Get rid of that. <laughs> name the layers. Yeah, I do. I do like I do I do name them sometimes. Then I start adding new ones and I just don't stop to redo it. You can see how that didn't color in right here. That's because this layer, layer 29, Rich, it's called layer 29. It's fine. Yeah. I also don't think anyone will ever look this closely. So, you know, if you had, if you're if you're reading my comics with a microscope, then you might see that little imperfection. But uh, that's a good point, Nerd Hollow. 
Procreate should make it so that the, the layers were always open. I thought there might have been a way to do it. Or like a pop-out layer. <laughs> you might be right. Yeah, that's not capable. But that's a good point. I wouldn't like it because I, if my hand is right here, then the stuff's in the way it's taken up. I'm suddenly drawing over here now. So. But so I don't mind it, the switching. There's actually a quick brush tool, I don't have it on, that allows you to just tap your finger and hold, and then the layers pop up, I think. But I don't like that. Some things work good and some things don't. Yeah. Leonard Hollow said he started using Clip Studio Paint. I don't like Clip Studio because of the... I mean, yeah, I'm sure it does fine. So I know some artists that use it. It's fine. But there's also a subscription fee, so it's like 80 bucks a year to use it or something. Which is stupid. I don't like that. And I just... I've drawn in it. And I feel like my brushes are just better... The engine's better for brushes and Procreate. Can't explain it. And there's a lot of doodads going on in Clip Studio Paint. Like, there's a lot, of, a lot. I mean, I don't need all the bells and whistles and models and reference. And I don't know. I don't want all that in here. I just want it to seem like a virtual Bristol board for me. This is enough for me to uh, figure it out. Like the thing that I wanted for Pro, I looked in the clip, I was messing around with Clip Studio. I like the view that you could see all the little page spreads and all that stuff over on the left. And I would keep referencing them, but you know, you got to ask yourself um, the core, what are you doing? You're drawing a comic page. So if you need to reference something, you know, you can just pull up the the photos on the left here like this. I'll get a I actually have to reference something now. If I can pull it up. You know, I'll just put my photos over here. I need to see something else. I'll have to look at this one page here. Yeah. Did I draw two tubes on this guy's? Yes, I did. Well, now. I was not consistent. I have two tubes on that guy. And there's not two tubes here. So I'm going to fix that real fast. You got to catch these things. <laughs> yeah, but Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I was watching Cameron Stewart's draw on that with Fight Club 2 or Fight Club 3. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to learn that program. And then I was messing around with it for a couple nights. And, oh, my God. I was like, this is a time suck. And I feel like now there's too many things for me to, to uh, do. So I was like, you know, as soon as Procreate turned on its lettering, part, I was like, all right, I can now do basically 90% of all of my stuff in Procreate. Um, some special effects and stuff, I still, some special effects you can't do in either that I like to do, I will take this into Photoshop. And I'm going to take it into Photoshop anyways, because I like to format out of Photoshop for my print pages. Because so we're not quite there yet with any of these apps. I had a friend that formatted his entire comic right out of right out of Clip Studio Paint, the desktop version, which is the same as the iPad version too. But um, it janked up his uh, it janked up his files, and then when they actually printed his, uh, it just looked bad. 
And he's like, I got to go back now and reformat every single page because there was a setting in Clip Studio. I was like, well, you just didn't get it right. You know, I'm sure I'm sure it'd be fine, but I don't know. For me, I just wanted to get the feel down of, you know, whoops. Then I'll work a little bit on this guy over here, just because. See, I remember the, where the panels are, Rich. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> or the layers. Until I'm not, though. Now that's isolated, and I need to unisolate it. I don't even know why. You know, I don't even know why I, I put this on this layer, but it's okay. It's there now, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. So when deciding, I'm going to bookmark this. When deciding between Clip Studio Paint, which can't figure out what it's for, <laughs> and Procreate, which doesn't say it's for comic books, right? When I decided which one to really kind of double down on, I saw how many resources were dedicated to the software development team of Procreate and how dedicated they are to the releases and improving and adding tools and not just letting it sit. And then if I just worry that like you put all your eggs in that clip studio basket and then suddenly whomp, one day it's not working with the new update and then you're caught and then you can't draw comics anymore. <laughs> So I, I want to avoid that. It took me a while to even trust doing everything in Procreate, to be honest. Just because I'm a, I'm just careful with it. Up until this point, I was doing... Oh, wait. No, oh, no, 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 no. What did I do? Right. Up until this point, I think I was doing everything on in Photoshop for a while on Cintiq, but you know. All right, this is going to be a trippy effect, but I'm going to do it on a couple different layers here. All right. I might need to mute my mic because I think my dog's going to start barking. Might be that my I might one second, I gotta I gotta go. I got visitors real quick, so I gotta let them know I'm streaming. <laughs> One second.
All right. Had to inform the the children's that I'm streaming here, so they don't come running in yelling or something. Mm -hmm. They're asking about my Funko boxes uh, for my pop. My what are those called? Bobbleheads or whatever. And they're like, "Are you keeping those bobbled? Or are you gonna sell them someday?" I'm like, "I don't know. Why? You want them?" Anyways, okay, back to where I was. I got a little pulled away here. I'm going to get rid of this panel. We're going to go above all these layers. I need to even go above. I need to go. Yeah, okay. We're going to. Funko Pop, yeah. I got some like rare Marvel ones or something, but pff, I don't know. You know, is anything really rare anymore? I need to figure out what color this shield is. I think it's like a. Let's go with that. So, oh, I needed to go over the lines too. My bad. Okay. Whoops. No. Oh. Come on. That quick line tool is awesome too, you know, because you can be like this and then just hold your finger down and it becomes like a shape or straight lines become awesome. It's super easy for drawing some borders and stuff. That's all closed off. All right. Then we're going to go to. Should have, should have kept Max or what's his face? Who was the kid in here earlier? Brian, Byron. Should have kept Byron around for this. Um, I'm going to isolate this layer so that I don't out overdraw it. I'm going to go ahead and take this. This guy, right? And then maybe like a little. A little dot here, a little light reflections, right? And then maybe even like just a hit of white, like right there, right along the top. I'm in Bob Ross mode right now. Just a little glare, a little highlight right there. Bam! Can't go wrong. Light, light hitting the window. All right. Then I don't know what the, uh, the I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to click this little N, and then I'm going to go through all the different layer. Um, I'm just going to kind of look to see what, if one pops off as like, oh, they look like they're behind glass. <laughs> now that one kind of looks okay. Screen and dodge, okay. If not, every not every once in a while, a built-in layer effect will look sweet accidentally, you know? So I go through them just to see when I'm doing the glass. Usually I'll just do it myself though. Let's see, color. So we'll go back up, multiply, maybe. Normal light. So normal, what I can do is I can just kind of fade out the fade out the lines a little bit. Do it myself manually. But lighting looks pretty good. Screen looks pretty good. Okay. 
we're going to go back to normal because I want to just do it myself. So I'm fading out this. Now watch this, guys. I'm going to duplicate this layer, and it's going to darken it up a little bit. On the one underneath, I'm going to... Now I'm going to lighten this layer up. Whoop. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to lighten this layer up to about that. And then I'm going to lighten this layer up. Wait, which one's in the front? Okay. Come on, man. Right. Now, go to my eraser brush. And uh, let's see what happens. What, what, what brush am I on? I probably want the airbrush for this one. I probably want to blast it up. And um, now I'm erasing parts of that layer that, you know, that are key. So you can kind of see that he's behind glass now, you know, or in a shield of some kind, right? That's how you do it. Of course, this is the really fast way, but then for that guy that's back there, I want to just isolate his glass. Go ahead and copy paste. No, wait, don't copy paste yet. Uh oh. Uh oh. I want to make sure that it's all the way up. And then I think I can, I think it'll still let me. Select that real quick. And then turn that layer back up. Am I on the layer? Yep. Cut and paste. Get rid of that layer. Still the airbrush. Okay. Come back to those isolated. Dark lines, a little darker. I'm gonna fade out all his lines. So now he's like since he's in another dimension, like, or not, you know, a, a one dimension further back is what I'm saying. Um, and then in his... This one I will erase. This line. There. Oops, that's too much. Put that back. Right on. So I'm just going to go ahead and merge these two now. It's a lot of little trial and error, but I think if I merge these, pinch. Now I can go back with the. Eraser brush again. It's a little bit big. And I just kind of want to erase a little bit of what's more in the foreground. And I actually thinking that 
This should be a little darker, so I'm just going to airbrush that in just a little bit. That's a little muddy now. I don't like that, actually. Shoot. I'm oh, messing it up. Whoops. Okay. that alone. Although I kind of want to see more of the symbol on this. There we go. <clears throat> okay. That's cool. Good enough. Then I also need to reference, you know what, I need to reference the other page because Just grab this blue. I should be able to do the rest myself. But in order to reference this page more, I want to save this video or this page to the desk or the uh, gallery. So that now we can pull it up live. Right. Right on. What are we doing here? All right. Let's go back to the first panel. And yeah, boom, boom. The isolated lines are white. I know that much to be true. white just like that one over there then I'll add some effects and stuff to these shapes underneath All right they can stay black all right good 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 now I'm gonna go into my handy trusty watercolor brush and I can do the rest from just the fresh color fresh color palette without selecting anything I think I got this but start in the middle right Take the 
dark. I kind of just, I don't know. When I'm thinking about the coloring, I'm sort of thinking about, um, like some sort of energy, like ion, but I don't know what these ships are powered by. I'm not a scientist, I'm a cop dude. But I knew, I do know that if there were energy, it would have, it would have tones to it. That's part of this. I might even change my brush here. I might even go with like, I'm going to use the light pen, light pen last. Uh, why do I not have my brush in here? Let's see. Comic coloring. All right. I like the damn brush. I always say that, and then I start using it, and it sucks. But I, oh, whoa, 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 that's not the damn brush. What's going on? Ew, what happened? Done. Yeah, okay, that's better. Let's just go. All right. It's like the funky, I like the funky textures in that. I just really dig that. So again, like, I, I don't know. I like um, the coloring I see. I, I can't pull it up right now. J-Bone from Darwin Cook stuff. This is kind of, when I looked at that coloring in, in New Frontier, I was like, this is awesome. That's all I want color. What the wait I gonna just like a streak of light, right? So just get in there, change the brush size that we're going now. I could probably paint the lightning myself too, but or the energy, but I got the handy dandy. Lightning brush here. Available in my brush pack. Yeah. Right. I usually use this for like my stitch character, but it's just the cool like oh. like I almost see that these ships go so fast, like we can see them in the comic, but they're going so fast, they are, they, are, they are almost like a bolt of lightning. Like, boom, that's how fast they are. But we're just snapshotting it because this is a comic book. But to me, that's, that's what's up. I don't think I'm on the right. I'm going to unisolate this and just check it out real quick. That might be fun. To, no, no, stop it. I also have another brush that I don't use much, but it's called Magic. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's my Magic brush? Oh. I need to mess with it more. It's not my it's not my brush sets, but it's way down here. Magic effect. And it really gives you like a right. It's real subtle. You can't see it from that far away, but it's it's just like those ion engines are are giving off some juice there, right? I dig it. And then for the actual engine color, it's it's white. So we could just get in there and just, oh, I forgot. I got all these, pen this is my massive brush list of testers and stuff, but I know that I'll find it there. That's why I'm in there. All right. 
Okay. Okay, okay. I didn't do it, but I forgot that the shield was kind of, their, their wind visor is kind of gray, but. Oh, well. Then I'd like to just copy this on over. So what I'm going to do is, check this out. I want to make sure I get the right tones for the ship, even though they're only appearing in the one thing. So I'm just going to grab this page. Wait, 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 wait. Grab the page, drag and drop it in here. It's going to go real big. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, like that. I'm going to move it to the top layer. So we're in there. And, um, I'm going to, I could have done this, to, I should have done this in the first place, but copy, cut and paste, so now it's on the layer. And then, um, back to this, I'll probably just go cut and paste. Uh, we got multiple layers here. Get rid of that layer. And now we got little we got little reference dudes. That's not the that's not the right correct term. But that's gonna be my reference color for these two ships. And then this will be well, I don't even know why. What am I doing? Why am I looking at the reference of the color for the ship? Okay. I'll move him closer to that one. I'm going to merge these. Merge those. I'm going to go ahead and... i got to keep that one. That's the windshield. The windshield thing, and I might, you know, I can noodle with that more if I wanted to. It looks a little muddy, but it still kind of looks like glass. So I'll leave it. Um, now we can get rid of that. And now I'll do this second panel. So it's going to be easier now that I can just grab reference the, uh, the, the color reference layers there that I just pasted in. So I see that everything's on one layer here. This guy, layer 29, rich. So we'll go to layer 29. Good old trusty layer 29. And we're going to color these mountains. And I think I'm just going to go with my watercolor brush. So since these are on the same layers, make sure this is isolated. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, color the background first. And there's also some dust kicking out. And I know that I can't go out of the lines here. So it's fine. That's nice. That's nice. I can go pretty fast. That's the idea. That's the idea. Of the isolating layers, right? So, that's keeping some composition in mind, like to use some of the darker tones to kind of bring your eye into the panel and where it needs to go, right? It is, see? It's layer 29. Right there. That's layer 29. This is layer 28. That's layer 29. <laughs> uh, I thought I had. No. They're all not named correctly. I did mess up my template. And I didn't realize because I fixed it. Um, this page specifically has one hour tacked onto it for some reason in the timer. And I'm like, oh man, this is taking me too long. And then it turns out that the template blank started at one hour because I forgot to, I saved the wrong template. I saved the template out that I was working on. I didn't flatten it and like start a new template. So it started timing it as if it took me an hour to, um, to fill out the thing. And I was like, damn it, DJ. All right, so then we got some smoke. So, or dust, I mean, kicking up, right? Let's 
sample some of this blue up in here for the engine glow. These engines are off, but glowing. And let's see. I might just go ahead and color all this with this, this uh, watercolor brush. Just keep the keep the shape size in mind. Because yeah, that's the only thing about that is it bleeds off. So it's it's faster just to do it with one brush. All right. The base color on there. Right, right, right. Four. And that's just going to be the, the go to quick color for it there. And probably the inside of the hatch, too. Okay. We'll, we'll just do whites. That there. A little bit of white there, a little bit of white there. Okay. Darker for underneath the, underneath the ship. around here same thing I think when these ships land I'm gonna do that just to make it cool I'll do a little effect there switch the lines I see what's up when I start doing that. And again, I knew when I drew that black squiggly cloud line or smoke line, I knew it was going to be white because the I want the ships to Look like they're landing. I can I can get rid of these. Um, I can just turn off the reference layer now. So now it's looking a little bit more like I <clears throat> like I wanted it to. And then kind of want to just put a little. Okay, so that's full opacity. Use my airbrush, grab that blue. I want it to be a little rich, richer. Oh, 
Ja. Oh. It's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, there, oh, that was perfect. Just a little bit, just a little dot in the middle there. Just to kind of look like a glowing, you know. Glowing engine, that's good. That one looks like what I wanted to do. Like a nice standing by light up engine there. Not bad. That's not bad. I like that. Cool, cool, cool. So we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna turn off the windshield for a second up there. Just so I can again grab the Grab the color of the suit. Make sure I'm on color layer 29. Can isolate layer Yes, sir. That's what I'm doing now. Doing it right now. So you see that's really small. But I also, I'll, I'll turn that windshield back on so I don't forget, but I might take this color palette and just kind of whoop, 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 whoop. throw it down here. Real quick, just throw the pallet on this guy. Just throw that. Throw the dark shade here. Select this light shade. Hit that. So now I got all three um, colors waiting for me down there. Maybe this, this. Just throw that in there. Throw that in there. The all right. This color, that color, whoops, that color. Where's the lighter, lighter color? So when I zoom in, those color palettes are waiting for me down there to kind of start using. Uh, and I forgot about the robot head. So that's a very important thing here. Um, to get to the robot head, I want to make sure I do the same thing because you know I did a lot of stuff on this panel where I did a lot of this flame in front of his face. Oh, so all I needed to do was turn off that. Just turn off that, turn off that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Go back to that page. Put them up on top of the layer art paste. Oh, I forgot to move your comment there. Paste. 
Uh oh, wrong, wrong paste. Shoot, what did I do wrong there? Let me learn. I think what I wanted to do was copy all, right? Copy all. Boom, that's seeing it all, not just the layer it's on. There we go. Now we go. Paste that robot head in here. Boom. There he is. That's Brad. <clears throat> oh, I wouldn't call it cheating, but it's a quick, quick. <laughs> Quick thinking ahead to speed up your process for sure. All right, make sure I'm back with my pro anchor there. Uh, base color of this head is gray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do the whole foreground in that color. That's fine. So that's gonna wait for us. It's okay if I go off the lines a little bit. That's okay. I think that's fine. <sighs> That's fine, too. I don't care if I go to the lines here. So I got to get in there and clean it up a little bit. And the ground, foreground. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's what I want. Oh, uh, looks like it's going to rain. And that would not be good for me. Let me see here. I just want to check my weather. weather. Just cloudy. Nope, says it's going to rain. It's going to... Oh, man. Says it's gonna rain at five o'clock. Ah, uh, no. All right, maybe I cut the grass tomorrow. We'll just keep drawing with comics. You know, I should have really cut that grass this morning. But I should have cut it last evening, but I was just too tired. It's really long right now, and I gotta get that going. Responsibilities uh, and my yard's way too short, sorry, way too small to hire someone to do it. It's stupid, it takes me like an hour tops to get out there and get it done. But damn it, I'm drawing comics, but I don't you know it's a 50% 50, 50 chance of rain at five o'clock so. I can't even believe it's five o'clock. It feels like noon to me. Ah, 
I've been at this one for two hours and 40 minutes. I think we'll probably get to around three hour stream and then we'll call it a, we're going to call it quits. You know, as a matter of fact, let's make, let's make that happen. I'm going to say set a timer for 19 minutes. So, when we're uh, when we're at nineteen minutes, let's see how much I can get done in nineteen minutes. Who knows? But already made some good progress on this page. So these these panels up here are pretty much done. Let me turn on that guy. That's cool. By the way, I think I have the lettering all over this page. So got the. Oh, uh, where's the balloons? Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I got a little, little, little bit more to do on this page, but it will be ready. I'm just going to keep working in the foreground here because this is interesting to look at more than more so than um, the other stuff. For the last 19 minutes here. So. And then I'm going to try to mow my grass real fast. That's the idea. Let's go see the dark. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the no, no. So this has been through some stuff, so I can use a muddier brush. Probably my damp color brush. I like that one for close-ups. Can get a little darker in this. Let me just let's go black. That one, it's this brush specifically, this brush reminds me of that J-Bone coloring style just because it's got that nice, it's got a nice texture in it. So it's kind of building up. It's okay if this looks a little dirty or even a little, you know. Oh, I need to isolate this layer 
What would they do? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, blue. Oh, no, 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 no. I think the I think the wet brush wants to pull um, the different colors together. I want that. I want like a nice blue right on the edge. Just like a, like a little highlight. That's looking pretty cool. I think we need a little more. Oh. I almost need black right here. Just to... really embedded in the ground. Other layers again, it's usually around the time that if you watch the other streams, usually right around this time, usually almost like two and a half hours into the three hour mark, that's when my brain starts to get into the zone, and then it's like good night because I could be here all night doing this. No, no, no. I just would forget to talk out loud about what I'm doing. I'm just kind of fading out some of these lines a little bit so they're not as pop. Like more like dense. Denser nicks, little nicks. No. Chinks of the little chinks of the armor there. This is really hard to see on the screen, but I'm just, I'm changing the black lines to just a little bit of subtle, really subtle effect. I don't even know if it really makes a difference, really, to be honest. Just a little subtle fading from dark to... Kind of the idea. 
I don't do like fully painted lines, but when there's a way that like light is hitting a spot really a lot, could even go to white right here. Right? That's cool. And then now the ground. I'm just going to stick with the damp brush, I think. But, oh, maybe not. There we go. I want to go really dark. This is embedded in the ground there. Well, what be seen the the texture stuff? Yeah, <coughs> I think so. It's about this size, probably when winning. So those faded those faded lines will definitely be definitely. I did a little bit of this stuff in uh, the Captain Freedom book. Just, but not as much, because I was coloring that pretty fast. This one taking my time on this one. Yeah, this is very J Bone coloring style, I would say. Like if you look at those new frontier, the the yeah. Pretty proud of myself because definitely looks similar. That's kind of what I was going for. I just really like that. It's just a real subtle look, look at those rocks almost look oh, pretty sweet. Cool. Oh. Uh, I this up. Lighter color. All right. good that's pretty good okay cool i'll get rid of this floating head don't really need him anymore bye yeah I was able to finish up those two. I know when my alarm goes off in five minutes, I'm not going to want to stop. All right, now we're on layer 28, Rich. In case you're keeping track, I'm going to go back to my other brush. Someday I'll make you proud, Rich. Uh, I will color. I will uh, really get into my pencils, inks, uh, inks one, inks two, colors three, you know. 
Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm one of those graphic designers that also probably had like final one, final, final, final two, final. <laughs> Very sure final file now. A joke about that. Oh, my wife is home. Hi. Is that the spreadsheet box? Awesome. Time for a live unboxing. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, I told everybody about the name Maximilian today. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't like people to shorten my name. <laughs> Rich says, oh, no. My name is also not Maximilian. <laughs> Rich says, oh, no, because I was like, I probably should tell the story, but. You told the whole story? Well, not the whole story. I didn't tell any details or anything, but, you know, if Maximilian were to find this stream, but I really doubt that Maximilian is watching comic streams on the internet. I was telling it in the context of that it's interesting in worlds of comics and whiskey and everything that you should know the community that you're in. That's the cut, you know. So if someone were to come to me and say they didn't know who Well Eisner was, I might go, oh, you better do some learning. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. I did notice also that it's getting dark out, and I looked at the weather it's just raining. a It's raining right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's raining. This alarm's about to go off. So I was like, I gotta go. Okay. I gotta go because I gotta cut my grass. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up this. Uh, I'm gonna finish up these guys then. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay and get this page done. Oh. Okay. All right. You know, the weather just says we gotta draw comics. That's what the forecast calls for. Finishing up this goddamn page. What's up? I will have to eat at some point uh, today because, you know, we got to live. But, cool. Are you going to make cheeseburgers for the Sure. Honey. Oh, my wife's going to make a cheeseburger. So. Awesome. It's the perfect day comics and someone's going to feed me. Man, I'm a lucky dude. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, I imagine I haven't figured this part out, but I like the idea that Oh, wait, 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 wait. I like the idea that their belt, you know, the belt should always match the whatever. I'm just kind of figuring them out as I go. That part will be gray. Uh, this gray. Mm -mm -mm. She probably would have told the story about Maximilian live as well in a nice way. We weren't making fun of Max a million, but I just thought that was really hilarious. It, Max? Maximilian. All right. Oh, that's the 19 minute. But, oh, I just hit repeat. Oh, well. Yeah. That's okay. We'll just work on it. I got to stop jumping around unless I'm just grabbing colors from things. We'll just work on this guy. Main tube is this color. Okay, backpack's that color. Right on. Three hours. Yeah, 
probably eat some dinner and I might finish up case studies. That sounds really crazy, doesn't it? Your boy's getting Harvard smarts. So I'm taking that Harvard course and I got to get some stuff done today on that. Who knew? Who knew that my new boss would be like, hey, do you want to take a... You know, he didn't even say, dude, I want to take it. He's like, I want you to sign up for this course. And I'm like, it's not okay. And he's like, now. And I'm like, yeah, it's expensive. So it's cool, though. I'm glad that I'm very grateful that, you know, company's paying for it. So that's, that's awesome. My new boss is all about that, like training, getting some training for my other people that are on my team that I manage too. So, and he doesn't want no. So that's the thing about my boss now. He's not, not against any of my other bosses before. Well, they're never going to watch this either, but my other bosses before were fine. But, uh, my new boss, he's like, I want you to get training. I'm like, all right, I can find some things for some people. He's like, I don't want them just to watch bullshit. Like, I don't want them to learn from, I, I want them to learn from the best. And I'm like, well, that's expensive, dude. He's like, we need to invest in our people. I'm like, all right, this sounds great. Let's get some budget. And I need to keep learning as well. Pretty soon I'll have a certificate saying that I have some Harvard smarts in disruptive strategy. And that's exciting. I don't know what it doesn't do. I mean, it doesn't do anything for me career-wise. I'm not moving careers or anything. But at least I can say, like, see, I know what I'm doing because I learned from these people. And I am actually learning a lot. I'm pleasantly surprised. It actually makes me, I, I don't know. I'm debating even maybe putting a couple bucks of my own money into that and getting some more training to do the Harvard Business School because I just really like the, um, <clears throat> this is a, this is now a paid advertisement for Harvard Business School. No. Um, this channel is brought to you by Harvard Business School. But no, I'm pleasantly surprised because I, it's not that I didn't think I would not learn anything. I just thought like, I'm too busy to do this. And I, oh my God, I know most of these concepts I thought like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marketing and uh, disruption and innovation. Okay. Got it. But I didn't. So I kept my mind open and I was really taking it seriously as if, as if I'm at Harvard or something. And uh, the concepts are kind of really interesting. I can't stop thinking about them. I keep I keep apologizing to my wife. I should apologize to all of you too. And say any strangers that are listening remotely or live or not live. All five of you. But I just can't stop thinking about the, some of the concepts. And it makes you think about your own life, like your own business stuff that you do and how you might have zigged then zagged on certain things. And it's interesting. Talked about it a little bit more in my other stream too. So I tagged it probably in the show notes about disruptive strategy and the milkshake thing. And it's just pretty neat. Pretty neat. I will end this stream when my when she's done cooking for me, because I will have to. Can't sit here eating a cheeseburger or something, whatever. I mean, I could. That might be fun. But now nah, I'm gonna end the stream when she's done cooking and go eat some food. And... Finish up my Harvard course for the module thing. For this time. And, uh, 
I need to look through some of their other classes and see, like, what else do they have to offer in this vein? Because I really find it interesting. I can't really say why. I don't know. I like to know why things fail and why things work. And this is really a formula that if you do, it works. Or at least if you apply the, the, the concepts, you have a better chance of success, like probably 90% chance of success or more if you have these concepts and you keep them in mind. So why would you not listen? Why would you not not listen to them? So. <coughs> right. Need more dark red. Follow the shadow down in his pants. I feel like those pads are this color too. The little knee pads. Hey, Rich. Thanks for stopping by. I'm watching. It's good to know people are watching, I guess. I don't know. It's like hanging out. Pop in, say hello. Fast forward through stuff if you want, because this is some deep, deep work. Not maybe, you know. Uh, maybe it shows how much goes into comics. I don't know. We'll see you. We'll see ya. I'll keep talking to myself, though, because even though I'm all alone now, I think Rich was the last person. Unless Dylan's still there. If Dylan's still there, Dylan, I watched the Sasquatch show. It says there's zero viewers, but Dylan, I want you to know I watched the Sasquatch show, and that was on. That was very surprising. And I, I was expecting it to be about Bigfoots, and it, it kind of was, but it wasn't. <laughs> so anybody out there, that's really interesting documentary on Hulu called uh, Sasquatch about some dudes that were murdered on a pot farm up in Northern California and this guy's investigating it and it's like he's an investigative reporter and it doesn't go the way you think it goes I was like whoa I wanted I wanted to keep going but I thought maybe the reporter might die if he if he kept going, because man, he started to find some really shady folks. But cool, I'm jumping around again. I gotta finish this guy's visor, so we're gonna go in here and grab the space color. And do this. Wow, what an interesting stream today. I had an 11-year-old kid stop in and tell me, please teach me. And I'm like, oh, no, yeah, I can't teach you, but draw every day and, you know, take your vitamins. 
then I showed my terrible artwork from when I, I'm going to always do that. I'm going to pull up that thing every, if I do it a thousand times, if a kid comes in and says, teach me, and I'll say, I want you to see how bad I was. But not bad, because I don't want people to think like they're bad. So, Byron, if you're watching this again, don't be afraid to show me your stuff. I'm going to encourage you. I'm not going to discourage you. Right? Right. I want to see your comics. I want to see, Byron, if you're coming back and watching this, and you're probably not, but Byron, I want you to send me your Webtoon link. Show me your comic book stories. Homeboy. Let's do it. Someday. Maybe you, you were 11 now. 20 years goes by super fast. And you will be... What's 20 plus 11, guys? Okay, it's 32. <laughs> Byron, you will be 32, and I will be 65 years old. And you can come on my channel then and tell me, DJ, I was 11, and I stopped by your channel, and you inspired me. And then... Now I make these hologram movies all because of you. And I'll say, thank you're welcome, Byron. That's awesome. Can you lend me $5 or $5,000 or <laughs> no? I never really think about that too much. It's, and when I get to thinking about people uh, looking to me for inspiration, I just feel weird about it because I have my own self doubts and stuff. And uh, then I feel some sort of responsibility for people that are training or, you know, wanting to look at my, my stuff and hoping and praying that they can make money or can make a career at this. And I'm like, there's like this pressure. So I just don't know what to say. I'm like, oh, man, I, I want to encourage you. But I also want to tell you, run away. But I also want to keep you because I love comics. And I want the next generation of people to do them. I don't want people to forget about comic books. I don't think they will. But, but to hear him say, I want to make comic books. That made me feel good today. He didn't say, I want to make video games. He's like, I want to make comic books when I grow up. That's what that dude said. That made me feel great. So you got to keep carrying the fire. Right? We got this fire in us called comic book making. And uh, we got to keep passing it. And Byron is the future of comics. Byron is going to revolutionize comics he's going to grow up to make comics like he said he's going to manifest that shit and he's just going to do it and Byron's parents if you're listening to this you better encourage that boy and Byron's wife in the future or in-laws you leave that you leave Byron alone you let Byron be Byron and he's going to do amazing things we're all going to watch his cartoon soon or whatever. We're going to read his comic books first. And then he's taking it over. He's taking over. Byron's got this. I trusted you, Byron. Do not let me down. You come to me and you say you want me to teach you. Well, then you better 
You better get to it, kid. You got a lot of work to do. That's my advice to you, Byron. I hope that when you are an adult, you come back and watch this and laugh. But I'm serious as shit. Byron, you got to do it. Because I can't. My time is almost done here. I'm 45 years old. <laughs> oh. oh. Yep. Hell no, I'm not done. I'm going to keep drawing comics till I'm dead. I don't care if I... That's how I want to die. I just want to go... Uh, I'm going to finish this panel. Oh, bonk. Drop dead right at the drawing board. You mark my words. That's how I'm going out, guys. When I'm like 100. That's how cartoonists go. You stop drawing, you die. Draw or die. Look at it. Look at all the famous cartoonists that stopped, retired, and then they died like a year later or something. But the ones that kept drawing are like, they're still alive. There's dudes that are old as shit. They're still drawn. They can't even draw good anymore. They're still just pretending like they're syndicates or something. I don't know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hmm. Well, we're way beyond where I said I was going to end, but I can't stop. I can't stop. These pages are not going to draw themselves. And I am only beholden to myself. I don't have an editor or anything like that. I'm my own editor. It's down on myself all week because I wasn't able to do this draw. Didn't have time. Got to sleep. Got to wake up for work. All that, you know. All right. I think his phaser is going to be the same color as his backpack but then I'm um mm, yeah that'll be fine what the heck oh I was on the wrong panel or no I was on the wrong brush all right there we go And I feel like stylistically here, I'm going to make this phaser thing. All right, stop with that. Uh, I'm going to make this phaser thing the same color as the ship. So whatever energy is in this, like whatever energy is powering their ship also powers their little lasers. So that will look cool. Get there. All right, it's just like a real little little light. It's got a few charges in it. I'm not gonna actually see it go off. But you can imagine it's some sort of stun pistol or something like that, not a lethal weapon. He's got one too, so I'm gonna go grab this. Yeah, and traditionally, this is not, I mean, I'm doing everything myself. So I don't know. I don't know, like I said, I'm my own editor, so I gotta be hold, beholden to myself and keep myself honest and time wise. I don't wanna fail and not finish this whole book. I'm only on, this is page three, and then I have page five, so the first five page scene, 
that we're working on here these past few weeks, uh, past couple weeks. Uh, I don't really have a, I don't really have an end goal in mind except for to get the book done, get the story done, put the pages up on my Patreon, and um, that's where people can watch and read live. And then <clears throat> I'll do these streams to keep encouraging myself or making myself, holding myself to it. If I make this stream, I did not make this. I did not schedule a stream today. I meant to on Thursday and I just was like, oh, I didn't have time. And then it's Friday and I'm like, I don't want to schedule a stream tomorrow. I'll just do it if I can do it. But I'll do one for Wednesday night at eight to keep myself, you know, whatever, motivated. And I had a lot of questions too this week. And I see some other people now jamming on the StreamYard um, app and I'm glad. I'm glad. If, if I can show you how to do what I'm doing to encourage you to do it, that's great. I'm super happy to share. So if you have any questions about what I'm, how I'm streaming or how I'm connecting the iPad here, just ask me. You know, just reach out. Reach out. I will make a video though about my streaming setup just just because people are interested, I guess. But it's real simple. It's <sighs> real simple. Because I don't want, you know, my advice to anyone that wants to live stream or for a comic artist, you know, you should focus on getting your comics done and not worry, be worried about having the fancy, all the fancy stuff or the best things. And, you know, there, there's cheaper ways to do it, really. If you can afford it, great. If not, just go draw, just shop and draw some comics. No. I'm going to make a shirt store that says that. It's going to just say, shut up and make comics. Stop making your excuses. Stop making excuses and start making comics. Don't be like, well, I got to cut my grass. Well, my in laws hate me. I can't, I got to hide my name because, uh, I can't let anyone know I draw comic books. <laughs> you you might laugh at that, but that's true. That is true. Uh, I wonder if that's Dylan back. If it is, Dylan, you'll have to go back and watch this again sometime. Don't want ah okay right on right on I can't select okay there we go good good that's still a little I kind of want them to be more faded out. Good enough, good enough, not bad. Again, you know, pencil and inking, let's put the shield back on these guys. Penciling and inking all this myself and coloring it and doing the whole process, so. Great, I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, Let's see here. I'll end the show. I plug in my. If you want to read the comic, go to Secret Forces or no patreon.com slash comics. That's where I'm going to be posting most of the um, 
most of the uh, as a page gets done, that's where it will be posted. So full pages kind of look like this. Yeah, cool. And what else we got? I also have all of my comic page templates and brushes and everything over at Gumroad. Um, Gumroad.com slash comics. So I think I could change the banner there. There we go. Gumroad.com slash comics. And that's about it. See, I should add them. You know what? Yeah, this is one of my sets of comics here. So I got the ultimate, ultimate comic pencil, super sharp, pencil pro 2018, the old school inker, pro inker, and my panel liner. I got this cool thing called Raker. I have a halftone shader and some vertical and um, shader lines, but I'll go through them some other video, but they're there. A lot of people ask what I'm using. That's that's that. So this is what the whole set looks like for the basic brushes. Yeah. That's it. Subscribe, tune in, and I am out. Bye-bye. That's how, Is that how you end the stream? Just saying bye-bye. Good day, Maximilian. Maximilian out.